question. How did how did you that how did your training evolve during the last year? What did, how did it change? How did how what kind of adjustments did you make? If you look back from Skidspool to now. Oh well, you can't compare Kidspool because I just think Yeah, yeah. Same, you know. Ki yeah, Kidspool to now is I'm a different animal, but I have limitations, you know, I I'm not the same animal I was a decade ago, when I was a fast guy. Um, but I, I think I'm still fast. I just don't have the, um, the ability to change pace like I used to when I was younger. And so we've had to make some, uh, accept some things like that, which I would never have accepted as a kid. I would have bashed my head against the wall going, nah, there's got to be a way, but I just can't do it. I can, and I found that out in camp, I just, I break, my muscles break. And, so he accepted and realised there's other, other ways to find speed, other ways to, um, to get to a level that could potentially make me competitive. And we're getting pretty close. We've just done two sprint races in Australia and, and I'm running with the best guys in the country. So, yeah. but you didn't know this when you started with your training? You, you didn't have this approach to training? Well, I didn't know how fast I could get. Okay. You know, it had been... 2002 was my last mm -hmm. race like this, you know. Oh, I mean, it's, it's like pulling a, um, you know, who's this, who's saying Bolt and, and putting him in a marathon. Yeah. You know, we're saying Bolt's a great runner, but he can't run a marathon. And putting a marathon runner in a 100 meter race doesn't mean one is worse than the other or one's not as good an athlete. They're two different sports. And, and um, but, you know, I, I think I've been able to adjust well because I'm more open to change and I think a lot of athletes that would have made this transition would have failed ultimately because their, adapt, their ability to adapt and change and make those changes might have been limiting for them because it's difficult to implement change and it's difficult to listen to um, people and, and, and put all the facts on the board. I am 38, 39 years of age. I, I, I can't I can't change pace like I used to. I can't recover like I used to. I find that the multiple hard sessions back to back, I'm exhausted. I've had to extend my training blocks from seven days to 13 days. So I used to do a track session every week. I now do a, a solid track session every 12 days. What else? You know, and, and these are things, if you're a, an athlete that needs a routine like that, it would drive you insane and you would break. And I found it in the Australian camp. I broke. So you extended the. I had to extend yeah. the thing, and and I found that out over the yeah. over the thing. And now I feel like I'm pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I'm being competitive with, and I think I've I've really gained a lot of respect out of a lot of the young kids that never would have ever raced me, especially a lot of the young Australian kids. But once they were now, Mitch and these guys would never have raced me. They would have read about me, and I was the Iron Man guy. And had I stuck with the Hawaii path. I've just been that old guy who used to do short course racing and now is an Ironman guy and now he's retired. But now they've had the opportunity to, to race me. They're like, shit, this guy's pretty bloody good. So and it's possible. It's possible, yeah. yeah and yeah. I, I feel like, you know, it, it is a lottery, the drafting races. But How did you find out about the, the different rooms you have to... Okay. In training camp, I broke down at the Australian camp. I tried to do what the was young guys the were doing. Injuries, with the injuries fatigue, and I was going back and forth, going, I can't work mm -hmm. out what's going on. And, and just talking to many people, talking to Nick Gates, mm -hmm. and to, talking about, because everyone has their, um, their what's the word, the, their comfort sessions, the sessions they run mm -hmm. to to build confidence. But when you start holding your sport like this, you don't have them anymore. So you try and reflect on what you used to do when you were 21. Those comfort sessions. Mm -hmm. I used to do 10k times. I used to do these certain track sessions, and you try and replicate those to build the confidence or to give you the. And I couldn't do it. So suddenly I'm like, I can't do it. Like maybe I can't do this. And you start down the path of not believing. But we just had to change. We had to not do as many. Maybe hit, hit targets further apart. Like I said, look at more recovery. And we found now we're starting to hit those sessions. And and in camp, I think a lot of the young Aussie kids break hard if I make God work. work were very surprised that I still had some speed, you know, and, and you know, training. For me, it's all about running. It's all about running. And it's all about swimming and running, and, and the disadvantage I have is the lack of points, so my position on the pontoon is crap. But 
you know, you can't make excuses basically. At the end of the day, I've got to dive in, I've got to race, I've got to show my worth to the nation, I think. I've shown in Australia in the top three or four guys, you know, in a single season, in less than 12 months, you know, everyone laughed when I made the decision, said he won't be in the top 10 Australians. There's this guy, this guy, this guy, well, they've all been eliminated, and now we're down to five. And I'm one of those five, on merit, not on name. And, you know, two weeks ago, I was nearly the Australian sprint champion, which would have been unbelievable to go from an Ironman champion to the Australian sprint distance, the shortest possible triathlon distance. And I think that turned a lot of heads. Like, if I didn't get the penalty, I would have won the race. The one that been the first Australian, would have been fourth across the line behind the Englishman, the Kiwi, and the. Uh, does the same apply for swimming and for running? Swimming, I just think. Or? Swimming, I just. I just uh, by not being a natural swimmer, I just think I don't have time to, to improve as much as I need to. I just have to build a fitness base and hope I can just sit with a group, mm. you know, and. Uh, the, the level of swimming's definitely picked up and just the, the 10 years of doing Ironman work where you just don't do the 20, 30 kilometer or mm. a week swim sessions, you lose that kick that's so imperative in swimming because in Ironman swimming you just don't kick anymore mm. usually. Ever. So I've lost that propulsion in my swim, I've lost that ability to change pace, I've lost all those things that are imperative in mm. this style of racing. I just have to go, okay, I can get to a point, be the best I can be and hopefully it just pays off. And, and do you train this to, to switch on fast at the beginning? I try to, but it, you know, swimming is just an uphill battle. Um, I've got, I, I found, I'm, I'm definitely at my swimming at levels just off where I was when I was younger. So, I'm, but the levels move so much further there, and I keep having to check myself. And the perfect example is, and Paul Ambrose, who I train with here in Australia. He just led the swim out in Abu Dhabi, outside of Clayton, he was the fourth guy out of water in Abu Dhabi. And I beat him senseless. So I'm looking at the, and even he says, far out, you're swimming so well, because Ironman swimming, and, 70, and ITU swimming is off the charts it's different. It's different. If, I, if, you, if you sent me back to a 70.3 on Ironman, now I'd lead the swim out. So I'm swimming so good, but I look like I'm swimming so bad, because the guys that I'm swimming against are so good. So it's, um, you just have to accept it, and, you know, um, Basically, we go into the whole battle with that thing that anything can happen. You know, I don't fold under pressure. I don't, you know, I bring a lot to the game for the team. I've shown that I can develop, and if they give me more time, which is till August, I've shown them what I can do in nine months. But I've got to qualify, you know, and that's so you sort of you sort of trying to rush things to qualify and then rush it again. So I'm hoping that cool heads will prevail. They'll see that as a nation, I'm on par with the other two guys to be selected. And I've done that in a very short period of time. Maybe if they're prepared to take a gamble, I could get better. But you, you realize that age is not putting you... Oh, age is not. No, age is not. It's just a different way of approaching well, it. It's, there are limits. Age does present certain limits. But, but not the speed. Yeah, but, it, it, but, but they obviously they also give you other strengths. Do you know what I mean? So everyone was always looking at physical limits, and, and it's one part of the game. Yeah, like I and I can physically run thirty minutes and thirty seconds. For, and maybe I can't run like Alistair Brownlee, or, but Alistair Brownlee can he perform at Olympic Games? Can he perform at major events? Can he back up? Well, actually, he's proved he has, but. He's starting to break, he has an Achilles problem this year. He's already, like these things that, you know, these guys aren't invincible. And, you know, I think age presents obstacles, but it, it also presents a lot of strengths that so many people overlook because they want to look at the simple option of, well, you can't do it because you're 38. It's just an easy thing to roll off the tongue. It can't be known as too old to dismiss you, you know? And, and I, I absolutely disagree because I'm kicking the ass of guys who are half my age, who are probably scratching their heads right now going, what just happened, you know, and there's a lot of them.